what about heaters? So traditionally, heaters are the weakest link of an aquarium. And, and what I mean by that is it has traditionally been freshwater, saltwater, anything. It's traditionally been the piece of equipment that kind of can fail the most spectacularly or will also quite often fail, you know, the most. That man, it, a lot of times, so if I take over a, a system, freshwater or saltwater, like one of the first things I look for right off the bat is their heater. And bar none, I get that replaced. I mean, there's brands that I like, but what what boggles my mind, and it's it's not fair because you know, when I take over tank and the people don't know what they're doing, and they didn't know, you know, what brand to get or what you know how to choose one but it boggles my mind that you'll find these like amazon specials where they don't even have a name just like the worst heater you can imagine and it's already that position the heater position is already the weakest link on your entire tank and you're gonna plug in like a like a literal piece of junk heaters suck uh we can't I, I it's it's interesting that we haven't come up with a better way to heat our water that isn't fraught with peril right <laughs> did so if if the heater cracks you know you can it can release copper and whatever goo is in the heater into the water yeah. it can electrocute stuff the heaters can be bad juju um and they're you know their thermostats are kind of goofy so uh, we do all kinds of stuff to get around that uh, we put them on a controller whatever kind it can just be a heater controller. It doesn't have to be like a full apex system or anything like that. Um, you use multiple smaller heaters instead of one big heater. That way, if one goes out, your tank doesn't get too cold. Um, but yeah, heaters are, are, are a real weak point. Um, Moppin and I were talking once about, you know, using infrared heating. Oh, that'd be weird. Um, so you put it above and it just, you just point it at the water and huh. it just heats up the water. Uh, I'll write that down again. Maybe we'll get back to that. That could be interesting. I mean, I, n none of these people are sponsors, but I'm just going to go and come right out with it and just say my favorite configuration. Is the Schwego? Is Shago. It's a German company. S-C-H-E-G-O. Yeah, and, it makes the best heaters. Yeah. Well, the reason I know of them and why I trusted them right off the bat. So, um, there, there, there was an air pump. Shago made air pumps, uh, the WS1 and WS2, and they are just absolutely bulletproof. Now, air pumps aren't that sexy nowadays. Like back when there was air-driven protein skimmers, like those were super popular, the Shagos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're just – no one cares about air pumps anymore, but they're just like the, the most absolutely awesome – air pumps that ever existed they have a, a smoked kind of plastic clear housing and you can see all the components oh and you, yeah you can replace all the stuff that's inside of it even though nothing ever really would go those back. are the those are the only air pumps that you could replace the diaphragm on yeah no other air pump oh no, yeah could, existent no. could you could you replace the parts on you know but they you know that's <laughs> So air pumps work with the, you know, electromagnet and they have these little, little arms with the rubber diaphragm and it just vibrates them. And that's how the air happens. It's but got a one way valve. So it lets air like a carburetor, it lets yeah. air in one side and then pushes it to your tank, the other one. But they're notorious for, you know, if you use cheap rubber or if you, you know, it's just a cheap air pump, like it'll just vibrate holes in that cheap rubber diaphragm. And I don't know what the heck Shago used, but... Anyways, that's that's getting off the reservation. The reason is is oh. I, I that that company made superior pieces of equipment. So how 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 else did you reef back in the 1800s, Grandpa Johnson? <laughs> well, we got on the wagon. <laughs> this whole show is uh, <laughs> oh my god. We used to take an under gravel filter plate, drill a hole under the tank. Connect a canister filter to that. And that was how we ran reef tanks. Yes. Okay. So sh you like Shago, Shwego? Shago. I've never, what are you saying, Shwego? I've never, I don't seen know, because it sounds better than Shago to my head. Anyway, so several years ago, 
Bulk Reef Supply partnered up with Shago, and I didn't even know that they made titanium heaters, but they cut a they cut a deal with Shago. Shago was, I you know, I don't know the the real specifics of it. Like, why didn't Shago bring their titanium heaters to the U.S. market on their own? I don't have the answer for that, but so BRS brokered a deal with them and brought them in. And the second I saw the Shago name on it, you know, because I knew that Bulk Reef Supply wasn't making them, that it was, you know, they were rebranding it. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know Shago made heaters. And I mean, I have tons of them out in the field and, you know, time will tell, but it's been like years, three years now. And I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I, this company made a great air pump, and now they have heaters. They're the best. <laughs> Man, with their quality control, I know it does sound silly because they made a great air pump. So so I'm, my brain was just saying, like, well, certainly they still have that approach to to the heater, to the titanium heater. Yeah, you know? I, I run them too, by the way. They, they seem great. You just want um, to take the piss out of me. What? Yeah, well, but it's, you know. I, hey. I, I. I this place makes the best exercise equipment. I bet you they now, make guacamole. Now they're making great airplanes. What? <laughs> um, uh, I think. Oh, we should talk. If we're talking about heaters. Oh, and then we should also talk about the BRS news. Actually, why not? Yeah. Um, but what the heater is made out of, I think, is important as well. So they used to all be made out of glass, and the problem with that is glass can break. You when you tap it or you know leave it out when it's heating um and so that made them fragile uh then they were some were made out of plastic which seems better but those can also melt yeah uh, those got weird. And, and then the titanium ones in the last five or eight years the titanium ones have gotten really popular and um you know i switched to those almost immediately because i can't break them by bumping a rock onto them you know yeah. they're not going to shatter um so but, I, I like the titanium a whole lot better um, because they're not going to break. And they usually don't come with a controller. Usually you plug them into something to control them. That's what I was That's what I was getting at. That What I don't traditionally like is, is the heater with the onboard or inboard, you know, control device thermostat inside of it. Now, you know, small freshwater tanks and all that. that I mean, that's been how they've been made for a long time. But, you know, this way where they took the controls out of it, because it's one of those engineering things where for them to be able to fit the, that control stuff inside that little tube has been part of their shittiness. Yeah. Because it's engineering wise, like, you know, it, it could be better if we had this separate controller with, you know, bigger boards and all this. And so we got to jam it into this tube. So I don't I don't like heaters that have, you know that have the the built-in thermostat on them yeah if if you're gonna it just seems like spend the 30 bucks now there's some controllers that are about 30 40 bucks that are that seem to have a good track record you know the ranko it's about 100 bucks Those are um, great too. that's a great one that that is almost pretty rock solid although they can go bad um the ink it, bird Inkbird. The Inkbird is one of the the inexpensive ones that seem okay. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like, I, after a bunch of money in a reef tank, I don't want everything to be killed by a crappy heater. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a it's not a very huge investment to buy not crap. Yeah. Um, but most of the hobby is based on selling crap uh, as entry level stuff. Uh, I mean, let's face it, that's the truth, right? The the hobby. The hobby grinds along, uh, not even the hobby, the industry grinds along on new people coming into the hobby and buying whole setups. That's that's where the money is. Once, you know, I'm not buying another setup for 10 years. You know, we're done. Um, but somebody, you know, the, the, the industry loves, all industries for hobbies are built on newbies coming into it and yeah. jumping out and coming in again. So... That that actually dovetails into unless you have anything else on heaters, is this just the dead horse show? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just want to say, and I didn't want to sound like a know it all about it, but you know, as I do this for a living since the freaking nineties, like 
I've just been through so many heaters and, and, and it is absolutely the weakest link of your tank and don't treat it like a redheaded stepchild and just, you know, just get whatever and put it on there. You know, for, for me, like I said, the, the Shago titanium heater, and then either using a Ranko or an ink bird, and you can either even attach those to a Neptune apex and do a lot of if, if then stuff to kind of watch its back. Yeah, and may and and you shouldn't. I wouldn't ever recommend plugging a titanium heater directly into a controller into an apex. Yeah, uh, I would go into something like an Inkbird or a Ranko, and then because yeah. then you've got a second uh, step of protection. Yeah, um, and if you've ever had, you know, a heater go bad on you, uh, it's a terrible thing. And why not have two levels of protection rather than one? Yeah. Boom.